One of the most basic characteristics of living organisms is the ability to regulate genes. In other words, turning genes on and off. For microbes, that allows them to send and receive signals, respond to their environment, and find food sources. In multicellular organisms, expression of specific genes is also critical for development of different cell types. This is what makes a plant's leaves distinct from its roots and flowers. At the heart of this process are specialized proteins called transcription factors, which are found in all organisms we know. Transcription factors bind to specific DNA sequences in the genome, where they act like on and off switches for their target genes. Beyond answering basic biological questions, understanding the interactions between transcription factors and the genes they regulate is fundamental to our ability to engineer organisms. If we want to reprogram microbes to degrade toxic waste or a plant to survive a drought, it's important to first understand how they control gene expression. This is where DAPSEQ comes in. DAPSEQ, which stands for DNA Affinity Purification Sequencing, is a method originally developed to study transcription factors in the model plant Arabidopsis. We've developed two new streamlined versions of DAPSEQ that we're calling Biotin DAPSEQ and MultiDAP. We demonstrated these new methods in a set of 48 bacterial species, but also showed how they can be applied to plant genomes. Here's an overview of how our new methods work. For microbial studies, all we need to begin is a sample of genomic DNA. We designed PCR primers to target each transcription factor gene of interest. The PCR produces many copies of the transcription factor coding sequence, which we then add to an in vitro protein expression mix. The protein expression mix is an off-the-shelf product that includes all the necessary components for protein synthesis. But we also spike in an additional reagent, tRNA that has been preloaded with biotinylated lysines. The ribosome is building the proteins based on the RNA code, one amino acid at a time. And each time the code calls for a lysine amino acid, there's a chance that a biotinylated lysine gets incorporated instead. In this way, we end up with transcription factor proteins that are decorated with biotin tags. Now in the meantime, let's go back to the original genomic DNA sample. First, we fragment the genomic DNA into short pieces. We ligate adapters to these fragments, which will allow us to sequence them later. Then we mix this fragment library with the transcription factor proteins that were synthesized earlier. Since the entire genome is represented within this library of fragments, some of them will contain the transcription factor's preferred binding sites. We also add streptavidin-coated magnetic beads to the mixture. Since streptavidin has a strong affinity for biotin, the transcription factors along with their bound DNA fragments become attached to the magnetic beads. Using a magnet, we can now pull down the beads and wash away the unbound DNA. The last step is to load the remaining bound DNA fragments onto a sequencer, which reveals where the transcription factor binding sites are located in the genome. That's the basic workflow for biotin DAPSeq. Now we can further increase the information gained from each experiment by multiplexing genomic DNA from many different species. We can do this by introducing a unique molecular barcode, a short sequence of DNA, to mark each individual genome. We showed in the paper that this approach allows us to directly study transcription factor evolution. We can observe which transcription factor binding sites are conserved in related species and how the target genes have evolved over time. In one case, we found that the E. coli transcription factor, MRAZ, which is involved in cell division, can still bind specifically to the corresponding orthologous genes in Bacillus subtilis, even though these species diverged at least two billion years ago. That means this binding site is nearly as old as bacteria themselves. We're hopeful that these new methods will be useful to the scientific community, and we're excited about offering these new capabilities to JGI users. To facilitate processing user samples at the JGI, we've developed a high-throughput workflow in 96 well plates, using liquid handlers to process hundreds of samples at a time. Check out the paper for more details on the method and examples of how the data can be applied. And let us know if you think these methods can help you in your own research.